friends, we're going to go deep, deep in the mines of Minolta to harvest this salt from all this internet drama. We're going to talk about a lawsuit. Let's see what you think. Here we go. All right, friends, let me paint you a story here. And we're going to review, I guess, this lawsuit. I don't know what we're reviewing, but we're going to talk about it because I found it to be a little bit interesting. I'm the man you may know as Z here with Our Reviews Will Kill You. And we're going to talk a little bit about the Sidney Watson versus the Blaze story. The Blaze! So, uh, Sydney Watson, who is no stranger to this channel, I don't talk about her a lot, but we did talk about her when she was involved in a different scandal with um, Jack Murphy. So, we did a video on that. This one's a little different, and I guess because I'm a little bit familiar, like, I guess I watched enough of it to be able to weave this story together. Sydney Watson, I guess conservative talking uh, pseudo journalist on YouTube, does a lot of scripted stuff, talks a lot about like women's rights and child abuse and things like that. And then she also spoke, uh, she was most recently on some interview with a bunch of people who disagreed with each other. It was like eight women on the state of feminism and they were all fighting with each other. And apparently that didn't go very well for her. So here you have Sydney Watson. And then you have. Uh, Essentially what happened was, I guess she decided to move into, and we'll go right into the story here. She decided to move into like more mainstream media. And I thought this was a bad idea when I saw it. It's because I thought it was interesting. She got connected with Glenn Beck's media empire, The Blaze. Don't know that much about Glenn Beck. Pretty sure he's like a conservative dude. Talks about things, stuff, whatever. Don't really care about the political slant on this. I just find the drama, the salt... Be tasty. I need to salt my tasty, tasty meats at night. So this is how I get my salt. So Sydney joined the show called You Are Here. And I remember it came out and she was teamed up with Elijah. Um, <laughs> I was going to call him Elijah Blue, but it's Elijah Schaefer. And uh, the, the show seemed a little weird. And the reason why The Blaze is famous, because they they took like, uh, I guess, hot blonde chicks like Tommy Lauren and Donna Lo Dana Loesch. And they signed deals. So Sydney signed some multi-year deal, and she's claiming it was worth $1.3 million. Well, she had a problem with the show, and I watched enough of the show to get what I was to like understand what was going on here. Essentially, she's like an atheist conservative person, and then she's teamed up with Elijah Schaefer, who is one of those like I don't know what the dude's deal is. I never heard of him before. I heard he got a lot of coverage during some of the riots because he was there. Maybe the Kenosha, Wisconsin riots. He was there covering it. And he's like one of those holier-than-thou Christian dudes, like telling you how to live your best Christian life. Like, yo, you know, Christian morality, blah, blah, blah. Those who are the most Christian, I tend to find, and if you, they all seem to be, I'm not going to say grifters. Grifters is, we throw that word around too much. But we're probably not living to the moral standards that we adhere to. If anybody says live holier than thou, and they're saying that they you should uphold these Christian morals, they ain't living that life, friends. They're not. All the, the preachers, everybody, nobody, the Catholic Church, nobody's living the ultimate God's life of truth, right? There's all there's skeletons all over the place, people tripping over problems. So if somebody's telling you how to live your life. If you want to be a freak between the sheets, I don't care what you do. Just keep it out of the public life. But privately, it's an issue. So here you, you you pair up the two of them. Didn't seem like it was a real good fit. And the thing I noticed was they spent all this money on like a set and a producer and all this stuff. And it's like two YouTuber podcast people. And they're not like Sydney does strictly like scripted stuff that she writes. And I guess she edits on her own. And Elijah just kind of rants and gets yells at people about things. So I remember uh, I saw the we covered the Jack Murphy story where she got yelled at, which was not that big of a deal. But I guess she felt like she was being bullied on the show, where she's like she's making all these different claims now, and she's claiming and allegedly that he was Elijah, the co-host, was drunk on set and he was setting her up to fail and would get guests who are misogynistic and blah, 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 blah. 
And I remember she she also claimed that he officially he would talk a lot about gay sex. <laughs> I don't know why he did. He had a big thing about it. He would talk about it a lot on that show. You know, I wouldn't watch it all the time, but I caught enough of it to get it. And I do know they set her up with the super chats. They would have her read super chats, and I don't know if she's just dumb or like doesn't know how to read that well. But as she's going through her thing, she's reading super chats, and half of them are racist. Or, like, they're trying to get her to say, like, if think about Bart Simpson calling up Mo and getting, like, IP Daily. Like, really dumb, dumb stuff. So she felt like she was being abused and, and all this other stuff. So now she, she, technically, I believe she quit. She claims she told the CEO and told a bunch of people that there was problems, things were going on. No one would ever listen to her, blah, 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 blah. What I find interesting is i have heard sydney's not her complete side but i watched her ramble for i didn't pay that much attention because she was just yapping for like 20 minutes about how she doesn't want to do political stuff and this year's been terrible and poisonous to her and her fifis are very hurt and now she is just going to play video games and stream so her entire career has been derailed and whatever she's from australia I, the, the whole thing is like, you know, because she doesn't totally understand American politics. And she claims that things happened with Elijah. Well, maybe she's half right. Turns out, and I didn't do enough research on this. And like I said, I had a bad feeling about this Elijah cat because holier than thou, giving me, telling me how to live my best Christian life. I would rather him tell me about my best Islam life my best Muslim life because he's clearly not living up to those standards because then this happened. He was terminated in October. Hmm. Interesting. Gets a little spicy. Now maybe she's following a lawsuit because he did this because she knows he got already got canned for this. And maybe he's going to sue the blaze now. Don't know. Um, but apparently he got fired because he was grabbing some boobage. Without consent. Now, what's really fascinating is that she, I guess in order to make Sydney feel more comfortable, there was one point where I guess um, Sydney and Elijah's wife were doing the show without her to like kind of figure out how to like rework that. I don't know what they were doing on the show. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that you couldn't tell. But apparently, uh, the Blaze looked into it enough to find out that they need to fire Elijah Schaefer. Now, apparently this dude, he's still got his own show. I, I forget what it's called. Something on YouTube. He's still going, doing his own thing. He's got a lot of fans. And look, you guys are probably going to pick me apart because I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just looking for the salt. Just just, just get the dramas out. Just want to see. Because I pay vague attention to some of these people. And we did a story or two on Jack Murphy. And we've done some stuff on Tim Pool. So I'm uh, seeing all these people like implode. You know, I'm watching this whole, like, weird conservative media thing, like, just explode on itself. You got the Daily Wire fighting Crowder. Uh, you've got Tim Pool going against everybody. And then we're going to throw in, don't for I haven't forgotten about you, Jeremy, from the quartering. <laughs> coffee brand coffee. Uh, I don't drink coffee, so don't even bother to advertise here. Anyway, so Shaver got fired for grabbing the boobage. And uh, I don't know what his wife thinks about that, but apparently it was there was proof enough and there was enough people saying that he did it that, uh, you know, maybe the dude's got a drinking problem. Don't know. Don't know what the deal is. But, uh, yeah, I remember they talked about going to see this thing called Uncle Tom 2, a conservative film that Schaefer co-produced. And they were seated next to each other and he grabs a little squishy. Not a good idea. He also picked a fight with his boss. Glenn Beck saying something that Mormons are not Christians. Sure, probably not a good idea. Like, I, dude, you can't be holier than thou and then be grabbing up on the ladies. It just ain't right. So my final point on this is I just wanted to call out Jeremy from the quartering because he had to go all up and simp hard for Sidney Watson. He changed his thumbnail because he was trying to be clickbaity and trying to be silly. And... Silly guy. I don't know why. he's He loves the internet drama just as much as everybody. But here he has Sydney Watson goes full SJW. She gets woke and sues the blaze. Will she go break 
Oh, will she go broke? And she is she going to sue the the quartering? Is the quartering neck? No. He does a show with her called Community Notes. They do a show together. They're friends. He's never going to turn against her. Maybe he knows some stuff that we don't know. Maybe her story is totally true. I will say my final, final point is I don't think it was a good match because here you have Sydney Watson who does her own scripted material and is not necessarily somebody who interviews people or just talks off the cuff like this for a living, doesn't do anything like this. Well, she was not the best at you know adapting to situations and interviewing people. That's not her style. That's not what she did. They weren't used to interviewing people. Yeah, she might ask a couple, a couple questions, but I don't think it worked. Elijah was more off the cuff and just kind of rant and do whatever he wanted. It just wasn't a good fit. She didn't seem prepared for it. She seemed real unprepared for the debate that she joined where she got upset with herself with some of the things that she said. I didn't even watch the debate, but I did see her own reaction to it. So, what do you guys think? Uh, am I totally off base here? Uh, does she Should she just play video games for the rest of her life? I mean, good on her. Maybe she wins, maybe she doesn't. I don't have a horse in the race. Don't really care what happens. Just wanted to tell you this fascinating story of internet drama. How will the lawsuit go? Will she get her money back? I mean, she quit. So you don't get unlawful termination if you quit. <laughs> you just don't. And there's a bunch of like law tubers saying that she has a really terrible case. You gotta remember, lawyers just throw everything up against the wall. I I I, I, I saw some of the stuff that happened. It was genuinely did. I don't know anything about this Elijah Shaver guy. I think it's a little weird. That he's got a wife and he's getting accused of all this stuff. Clearly accused enough to get fired and not file his own wrongful termination suit. As an absolute law scholar here that I am, master of all things law, the arbiter of all truths, I'm telling you, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but I hope you guys had a little bit of fun. I hope I brought this saucy spiciness up so that you could enjoy it. If you want to hear more about this kind of stuff, I'm not super huge on the internet drama, but I like a little bit of spice to spice. So uh, you let us know what you think down below, and I'm sure I'm going to get plenty of hate, but we still love y'all. Catch our full-length audio podcast, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time streaming right here on YouTube. We're on Rumble. We're on all those good places. You come here, put some fazools on us, and maybe we'll win something. Anyway, we love y'all, but I am on to the next one. Bye.